everybody. James and Tammy headed, headed west with the sun behind us. So when I move my head, you see that horrible glare right there. I'll try and put my big head in the way. I've got uh, Trent M. Uh, question, at the end of the video, you're talking about one part possible litter and making sure to take an x-ray beforehand. Uh, just to make sure you're not going through a C-section that ends up being no pup, correct. So if you're in doubt about this, I mean, if you can palpitate a pup, good, you're gonna have a C-section. But if you're not sure, definitely x-ray, because I can tell you this, Tam, we've been in this situation before, we didn't know if the dog was pregnant or not, and sometimes it wasn't, and sometimes there was a puppy in there. So the only way to find out is an x-ray. Or, or, oh, or palpitate, yeah, go ahead. What day do you do that? When is it okay to do that? Well, you could do an x-ray day 45. Uh, I'd recommend doing an x ray. Ultrasounds when? Day 30. Day 30. Day 45. The reason you don't do an x ray till day 45 is the bones haven't calcified enough to show up on x ray. But we do typically, if we can do an x ray, we look, we're looking at like day 55, five days before due date. If we're doing that. We don't do that very often because most of the time we know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I've asked this question before, but it's coming up again here. If there's only one or two, why would. Uh, they're talking about. Uh, I've heard from a couple of breeders that they would actually abort the litter if there's only one or two. Why would somebody do that? No good reason that I can think of. It's crazy. I mean, you're in for a penny and for a pound. I mean, I, I just don't see putting your dog through a C-section uh, or, yeah, I mean, no, I wouldn't, I don't endorse that at all. I think if you've got a puppy on board, it's time for the puppy to come out and enjoy it, not to abort it. Oh, I think you answered that the last I, time. I, I did, I did, I did. Yeah, yeah so it was maybe somebody yeah. else asked a question. I can't uh, believe somebody asked that. Well, no, they were told that by some breeders, so they were questioning it. They didn't think it sounded reasonable, and it doesn't sound reasonable. I can't breeders told them to do that. It must be yeah. puppy mill breeders, I guess. Yeah, possibly. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Uh, Arlene Arias says, hey, my female was at a four, then took her two days later. She was at a five and took her again, went down. So we waited, took her again. She was at 8.6, took her again today. She went back to a 5.6. Is this normal? And what should we do? So the answer is yes, it is normal, especially in young dogs that are not much over a year old on their first litter. Very common to see this thing doing this bouncy numbers. All you can do is keep testing. The moment you get to an 8.6, you'd expect the dog to be ready maybe the next day. So at an 8.6, I'd be testing every day. At a five, I'd test in two days. At a three, I'd test in four days. Hello, James and Tammy. Thank you for your video. This is RC. What percentage of the male's DNA structure passes into the litters? Well, so you're, you're, I'm going to answer this two different ways. The first one is how much of the DNA from the dad goes into, the, into each puppy? And the answer to that is exactly 50%. Exactly 50%. Because what happens is each parent has a double strand of DNA that unfolds and then those two half strands wind together to produce the new DNA of the of the offspring. So that guarantees that exactly half of that DNA come from mum and half it came from dad. Now, in terms of the dad structure, how much of that comes from dad? I mean, again, approximately a 50%, but it's a mix of both parent structure. So so that, that's not such an easy question to answer, but basically the, 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 the quick answer is 50%, yeah. Uh, well, I'm just thinking about horses. I think it's the the mare that does that. No. No. In all in Is all it? in all creatures oh, that okay. have DNA, okay. even single-celled and animals, um, their DNA splits and they get 50% from each pair. Okay. But which 50%? The, the, the issue here is now if you look at you, you're made up of 30,000 approximately 30,000. Uh, gene pairs and so which of those genes do you pass on well that's the part that is completely random so you now all of the eggs that you have or all of the sperm that are males producing they're not identical they're their own mix of your DNA and so for that so so for that reason there is going to be some difference okay well I didn't get that quite right they're gonna be different because it splits different ways uh, I, I don't think I want to go without getting into some detail get rid of that sun here in a second oh, I'll get my big fat head in the way there it is um, oh there it is again oh yeah 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, Legal's Heavenly Bulldogs. Pied, from what I understand is that Pied is a recessive gene and requires two copies. Uh, she's a visually Pied puppy. I bred my brindle Pied to a Merle stud, have three white pups, each with coloured facial spots, and one small colour spot. Am I missing something? No, you're not. So, so the first thing is, is you're exactly right. To get a Pied dog, both parents have to at the very least carry a copy of Pied and hand it off to the offspring. So any Pied dog will be SS. Um, now, since you bred to a to a Merle stud, which, which is NN, you said here, which means it does not have Pied, then all of the puppies will carry a copy of the Pied and none of the puppies will be Pied. But you, typically when you've got a dog that carries a copy of Pied, you will see some white spots on that dog. White on its chest is very typical, white on a hand or a leg is pretty, pretty typical. But it will not look like a pied dog where you've got large amounts of white on a different color background or, or vice versa. Oh dear, somebody's asking me something for Spanish again and uh, can't answer that one. You have to learn how to speak Spanish, James. Ki hizo con tenos, tentos baby ki hermosos están un fuerte. Saludo a la distancia. You want to have a go, you want to have a go at that? <laughs> Something about babies and how far away are you and saludo, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he says we're giving you praise from long distance. I don't know. Is it a deformity when French bulldogs have the rear legs pointing out? Lucy. Um, Adult or babies? Because when they're babies, you can correct that. True. So it's, think it, think it's about sometimes yeah. Sometimes it's the way the puppy lays in with the mama dog. Or the way it's been in the book, where it's been in the in the right, sack, getting right, folded up. Right. It's so not a deformity because of right, not yet structure wise yeah, wrong, not, but you can fix that. If you have a dog who um, at an older age displays 12, out like that, twelve weeks or something else with the legs that are wrong, that is a deformity. But deformities like can be this. deformities yeah. can be fixed. Like Tammy's saying, by taping legs up. You can fix deformities. A lot of these things are just because you've got soft bones that have not fully developed yet and they sort themselves out. But remember, if you've got a puppy that's got legs really sticking out, I've seen them even backwards, haven't we? Front legs, yeah. paws are sticking backwards. Yeah. I mean, you think, oh my goodness, this dog's not gonna, ever gonna be okay. Right. And uh, you, then you go ahead and take the back legs up and blow and behold over the next week, fix it itself. So it can be a deformity if you don't fix it. If you fix it, it's not a deformity. Uh, yeah, Leslie jokes. So I love it when you two take videos when you're out and about. It makes my day. Well, thank you. We enjoy doing them. Uh, Laz Nieto says, uh, Kevin across the channel, really liking my 11 week French DNA is Big B, Little B, which is a copy of Tesla chocolate. Little D, Little D, that's a blue dog. Um, slash CO, I think you mean it has a copy of, one copy of uh, Coco. Little E, Little E, that's a cream dog. L4, so that sounds like that's a platinum, that's a uh, fluffy carrier. An S, which is a copy pie. Could you tell me if this is a new shade platinum? No, it's not. Because to be any kind of a platinum requires that you have little D, little D, which you have, Little E, Little E, which you have, and two copies of some version of chocolate, C-O-C-O, C -O, mm -hmm. or Little B, Little B. You have neither. You've got a copy of each. Yeah. You are a new shade maker. And if somebody told you that dog was that, you better be calling them back up. Yeah, we had a conversation with a customer the other day yes. about this. Yes, They thought they'd a gotten this. platinum is only lilac and tan, but a new shade is what James just described. Yeah, so, so when we start talking about Platinums, which is you know a, cre a cream dog, right? Which is so you can have a platinum, which what we would call a little d, little d, little co, little co, little e, little e dog, versus an Isabella, which is testable chocolate. So that would be little d, little d, little b, little b, little e, little e, or a new shade, which is both versions of chocolate. So that's a little d, little d, little b, little b, little co, little co, little e, little e. You've got a new shade maker. 
you've got the ingredients to do it with the right dog, but it's not that yet. That's what this woman had was a new shape maker, but not a, not a, or it was an Isabella maker. They told her it was an Isabella, and it wasn't. It was right. an Isabella maker. Big difference. Yeah. I mean, it also and had she brindle. paid lots and, of money for And it had brindle. And it had brindle, Yeah, too. and it had brindle on she top of She paid probably twice what she should have paid. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, I mean, this is, you know, the, the problem with this, and, I, you know, we, we keep harping about do your DNA, because the problem here is people are upset. Nothing to do with us. This is not one of our sales. It's somebody no. else. Somebody's getting somebody help by Somebody else's sales. But the problem here is, is the person selling the dog has not, you know, I don't want to say misrepresented in, a, in the terms that they did, definitively did something that they knowingly did wrong, but but either way, they represented it as a Isabella dog when it was not. Right. And so now the customer is upset, rightfully so, because they were told one thing and they're getting a dog that's something else. And this makes a big difference in terms of what you pay for the dog and what you're going to do with it. Now, she had a dog that she was under the impression that she was going to go make Isabella's puppies immediately, and the answer yep. is is that she... she already has an Isabella maker at home. She yep. said, why do I need yes. another Isabella maker? I was wanting to buy this yep. as an Isabella, and it didn't happen. Susan Brocksmith, Tammy, you sound like me with my hubby. I feel, <laughs> I feel sorry for your hubby, Susan. He's obviously hand-pegged. Keep poor, it up, Susan. Poor guy. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a we husband wife swap. He comes to live with me and my wife comes to live with you. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Many Jacques or Jacques Jacques says, Hey, I see there's a new talk about a new gene that just came across. It's called the pink and husky gene. All of if you know about these could you explain yeah, what they the are. This is the first time I heard husky. husky. Yeah, pink of course, yes. Huh? Pink we've heard of, haven't we? Oh, yeah, pink yeah. we've heard of. So tell us about pink. Do you probably know more about pink than I do? I don't. Oh, okay. I don't have a clue. Oh, you don't? No. Oh. Well, is it albino? Is it an albino? Well, I think it's albino, mostly. Yeah. I, there may be two different versions, one that's albino and one that's not. I don't know. I... Okay, so look, we, we're talking off the top of our heads, so we're going to yeah. find out more about this and we'll do a video I don't pinks. know what a husky. Goodness. No, I haven't heard a husky. I mean, when you say Does husky, I think triple coat because because uh, our dog Johnny Cash, uh, Johnny Cash oh, he's, he's got really... like a triple or quadruple oh, coat because yeah. Yeah. it's just thick and full. Yeah, he's, uh, he's. I would call that a husky, but I yeah. don't know. Yes, Ooh, that sun's bright. I got there. you blotted it out. You may have to. Yeah. There we there go. You go. Um, Someone's saying ganache. It must be the video, but he looks a little long in the back. No, he's not long in the back, but it's the video. Uh, no, ganache is not long by the no, means. No. Yeah. Is that an El Camino or um, what is that? It's an El Camino. Or is it a Ford product? It's a Ford product. It's a Ranchero. Ranchero. Ford product. Yeah. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, we're talking about cars here. Tammy's a dad was a had a car lot, and I like cars, so we're always. <laughs> I'm, I'm much better at her on the foreign cars. Oh, and let me tell you, if you need to buy a vet, James has them for sale. He does. He Lotus also Lotus. has a, what is that little black car that you have? Lotus Elise. Lotus. So yeah. if anybody interested in buying a vehicle from James, please call him. Or motorcycles. Bon and Dome Kennels. Bon and, bon and Dome Kennels, excuse me. Bon and Dome Kennels. Hey, could you do a video on Cryptic Merle? Well, I have talked about cryptic morals before, and I'm not sure there's much I can do on a video on it, but basically what a cryptic moral is, is a dog that doesn't look moral, but comes back with a moral marker. So it has the genetic it's, marker for moral. It's a copy of Merle, right? Yeah, it has one copy of a moral that doesn't show up. And the interesting thing about a cryptic moral is that you can breed a cryptic moral to a moral and get away with it. There's only a 2% chance of getting running into problems versus a much greater chance of a moral to a moral. So most of the times, you probably don't even know the dogs are moral, and, I, and I'm not sure what a cryptic moral will produce. I suspect that you won't see the moral. If you put a cryptic moral with a non-moral a non dog, that you won't see any moral puppies, is my guess. I don't know, though. It's probably a wise thing that when you get your puppy, do it another DNA, whether the uh, breeder has done the DNA for, you know, just your reasons of because you're breeding. Go ahead and do another DNA when you get it home. Um, and ideas, we've got a number of questions here, so we'll go through them. Um, 
Does the locus and tan points also act on M? I can't even say it. The question is, how do you know if a dog's got one or two copies of tan points? Well, first off, there's two ways to get tan points. There's an ATA dog and an ATAT. -AT. Both are tan points. Typically, ATATs are more white in color. ATAs are more orange in color, but they're both tan points. How do you know if you've got tan points? Because you can visually see them. It'll be obvious, unless the dog's got brindle, because brindle will wipe out the tan points. I'm going to argue that point because okay. I've had ATAs show up points like a AT. Well, yeah, 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 I agree. It's, I mean, if you've got cream present, it lightens them up too. Right. So, or so intensity. or intensity. Right. So, so, so Tam is right. You know, you can't just. The problem is, if you've got a dog that could be ATAT -AT or ATA, you best be testing it to find out because otherwise, you're likely got a good chance, fifty percent, of getting it wrong. So, it's back to this. You know, we make guesses on our puppies when they're produced, don't we? We say, yeah. oh, it looks like an AT-80. But we all, always do DNA. We always do DNA yeah. on those dogs. On we all do our DNA. puppies. Every breeder should be doing DNA. Well, I mean, puppies. if you've got two what they call homogaeous dogs, they, I, their, their genetics are exactly across the board. For instance, a Humpelot, who is little D, little D, little E, little E, little C, or little C, or little A, little A, and N, no pie, do you know exactly what he throws? There's no argument about it. If you put him with a likewise female that has two copies of everything, you know exactly what you're going to get. And in those situations, a DNA test is not required. But that's not the norm. I'm trying to have the DNA test uh, This is uh, N ideas again. If a tri ghost dog, mandatory is KK. What's a ghost dog? I don't know, I don't understand that question, so we're going to move on to the next one. And another question. Do platinums also need to be uh, double intensity? No, they do not. Double intensity affects cream and makes it lighter, but it's certainly it's not an ingredient of platinum. Platinum dog is a dog that is uh, a, a lilac dog covered in cream, or an Isabella dog, or a new shade dog covered in cream. How do you write the gen gen genotype of a non-platinum white dog? There is no, well, in the Frenchy world, the only way that you can get a true white dog is it is an, a, an extreme pied, and it's not a cream dog. So creams typically, are, but now with cream and double intensities, you can look pretty white, but they typically tend to be an off-white color. I've seen platinum's quite white white. Yeah, so it probably got a double copy of intensity when that happens. Um, my point here is, is there's two ways to get a white dog. A platinum dog that probably has intensity could, could look could look very white, or an extreme pied could look very will look very white. And ideas against asking about pied now. He says, Is there really an S, S, I, S, P, S, W? So, different reporting agencies report in different ways, but as far as Frenchies are concerned, there is only pied or not pied. So, it's either S or N. Sometimes it's done as capital S, little s, but, but the answer is, is there's in, in Frenchies, there's only one version of pied. And you do ask another question about dogs that have white chests and paws. Typically, they have a single copy of pied. Heal Q, your video is very helpful. My dog has had her first C-section two days ago. She's been panting a lot. Been to the vet today and said she looks fine. She's eating as much as she as she likes, mostly on starter mousse. Gets cottage cheese and daily vitamins and calcium. I'm worried about the excessive panting. Anything I can do? Yes, take a temperature. Well, another thing too, when puppies are moving down lower. No, she's like, had the puppies. Oh, she's had puppies. Yeah, puppies are three days old now. Okay. Yep. Do you have her on a not a heated whelping system that we sell? Well, that's a good point. So look, yeah. here's look, the reason for panting. Is that well, a wreck? Looks yeah. like it, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Just happened, didn't it? Something's happened up there. Um, just must just happen because there's. What is going on? It's a tractor trailer. God, it went across right through here. Oh my! Good lord! Probably went to sleep. 
texting yeah. on the phone. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we interrupted there because we were kind of rubbernecking on an accident on the road. Um, okay, so let's talk about, first off, any time that you're worried about your dog, what do you do? What do you do, Tammy? Uh, take a temperature. There you go, you take a temperature. Such a simple check thing to do. Gums. Check their gums. Check their gums. their gums are pale. Yeah, it's an indication. They run in a little fever, so yep. take their temperature. But take their temperature. And the temperature of a dog that's in good shape is what? The temperature? Yes. Isn't it a 100.1 to 101? Yeah, 100.5. Yeah, exactly. A dog that's got a temperature of 101.5 or more is a dog that has a fever and needs to go to the vet because you need to find out what's going on. So that's the first thing to do. Dogs that are panting, you know, it could be because they're hot. You know, if you've got a heat pad underneath them, you should be using a heated system. They don't like it. Dogs tend to pant for the first 24 hours with the milk's coming in. They tend to pant, so that's another reason. But if she's gaining, if she's eating food, drinking water, being attentive to her, to her babies and doesn't have a temperature, just hang in there, it'll be fine. My goodness, I've just spent 21 minutes. That's way too long. We're going to stop right now. Bye for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.